Hello, this is Tasty Eats by Tess. Today is the day two of sourdough starter and how to go about making it. So we started um, the very first sourdough the day before yesterday. This is the one we made yesterday. And this one is my old sourdough that I've had for a couple of years. So when you put the sourdough into the oven uh, the very first day, uh, nothing will happen. The second day, you will already start to see something happening inside the jar. This is now the third morning and it is already active, but you still need to continue letting this get sour and letting it get a little more active than it already is. So the longer you have your sourdough, the better uh, it's going to be in terms of flavor and sourness. So although this is ready on the third day, I suggest every evening taking half of it off and feeding it for an additional, I would say, two to three days at least, and then you should be able to make your loaf of bread. And again, the longer you keep that, the better that it is. This is the one we made yesterday. It's starting to become um, active. It's um, bubbled up a bit. It's not really doubled in size. And so this is my two-year-old sourdough. And this one, you see, like I was saying, it'll go up uh, two-thirds of the way up the side of the jar. And it's very active, as you can see from this. So I'm going to leave this sit just to get a little more sour because I have fed this already this morning and um, it's good to go to make the bread today. I'll just give it maybe a couple of hours, um, if that. Um, I'll make a judgment call as, as the time goes on, um, and we'll see how this uh, plays out. Great, so we'll start with our bread now, and you'll see that after a while, it's almost to the top. So the yeast is very active. We have here, to make the bread, two cups of water, that's very warm water, and all we need now is one cup of the starter. So we'll be using, when you mix this now, it's going to go down and it's going to deflate. We take out a cup, so you should have always once you've fed your dough at least two cups inside of here so that when you're making your bread you're taking that one cup out and you're left with one cup you don't have to do anything else with that once it's active you just close this up because it's already risen it's done its job um, you can close that up, put it into the fridge, and use it within a week, maybe two, depending on when you want to make your next bread. It's just going to go dormant in the cold fridge, close it up, and leave it. Once you open this up and start to make a new bread, you just let it come to room temperature first, feed it, and wait. You might want to give it a couple of days of feeding, just so it gets uh, stronger after that dormant stage. And that's all you'll do. You'll always wanna keep at least one cup of sourdough starter for your next bread. If in between, because at this point with your um, sourdough that you're just starting, whenever you're taking off half of that sourdough, you can go ahead and make yourself some muffins with that, or maybe not bread at this point. Um, you could always try making a bread with it at this point after the second, third day, because it will have risen. 
and it will have bubbles in it. But I would suggest a, something like a cake or donuts or something of that nature, muffins. Um, and instead of wasting it, you can throw it out and feed it if you want as well, whatever way is best for you. So we're going now with the two cups of wa warm water, very warm water. And in adding the sourdough at this point, you'll see that it it's floating, it's light, it's fluffy, it's airy. It's not really sinking to the bottom. And we're also, sorry about this, I also need some salt here. Bread does not come seasoned. So to this mixture, we're adding five cups. To get the measure of, but with the scoop, it's the same thing. So for me, it's five cups. I always start with four. Just in case it's extra dry in your place, like it is in mine sometimes. And you just want to give that a good mix around. Once you've added your flour or some of the flour like I've done, you can add a tablespoon of salt or close to a tablespoon of salt. It's to your liking. So this is already quite thick. And that's just four cups of flour. It may take, in my case, again, about four and a half cups. What's that? Give that a good mix around. And this is a relatively soft and wet dough. I will be making, I think I'm going to go with baguette today with a relatively wet dough. And this is pretty well mixed around. And if you have seen my previous videos, uh, with the yeasted bread, the active dry yeast bread, I basically use the same method as I did with that. I just mix, it's a very wet dough. You'll be adding extra flour later, but you want lots of, you want this light and airy in the end. I think I will go ahead with a little more flour though. This one's a little too sticky for me. Oops, didn't want that much. Just a little bit there. You want it to be sticking to your hands and very gloopy like my previous bread. This will get firmer as time sits as well. And I'll give you an idea of how it looks. You keep coming back to this every, I would say 15 minutes and just turn it, pull, give it a stretch and turn it on top of itself, just like that. Perfect, we'll see how this goes and I'll show you the next step. So I just wanted to share this step with you I've only let this sit uh, about 10 to 15 minutes. So now it's really nice and stretchy. And when you bring it up and over on top of itself, you'll notice that it's holding a shape already. This dough, although it's sticky, it holds its shape well because the yeast is very active. If it's not active enough, it will just flop off on itself or flop down and it would not hold any shape. So you want to do this a few times just to give you an idea that you would 
You'd actually come in, I would say about three times every 15 minutes or so. And just give it a nice stretch because this is basically, it's not an, a, a kneaded dough. You don't have to knead this at all. That's why it's a simple one. And just come and pull and bring it over on top of itself. And that's all you do. So every 15 minutes or so, take a look at it, give it a stretch and pull it on top of it, itself. And it won't take that long, probably about three hours, maybe two hours actually, um, before this is going to be ready and we can put that in the oven. Um, and we'll let that rise. We'll shape them into baguettes. Perfect. So here we are. It's doubled in size. So we can just go ahead and take that out. I'm going to dust this a little here just so it doesn't stick so much. And we're going to be making two baguettes. These are going to be relatively large baguettes. We may end up making three smaller ones. I think it's more closer to three than two. So let's see how that goes. So I'll divide that into three. Hopefully, there we go, that's one. A little bit more to this one. And then we'll go with the three. Perfect. So in shaping a baguette, this is what I have noticed. I just dig my fingers in, roll it on top of itself, and I keep doing that a few times. I'm deflating the gases that are in the baguette. Let's give it a bit of a roll and some extra flour here. Just leave that on the side in case we need it. We don't want to put too much flour when you're making your folds. And I just keep going along like this. And we want to have that on the seam side down. You just kind of plump that up a little like that. The end should be a little pointy. You can move it around. It doesn't matter. It's supple and it will not deflate. If you push on your dough, be able to see from this that it's active because it's going to bounce right back up again just comes right back up if your yeast is not active it's not it's never going to do that it's just going to stay the way it was so here we go again we'll do another the second baguette just do basically the same thing keep turning it on itself and you really want it to be about the same size all the way down. There was no added flour to this. You'll find that once your dough is very active, your yeast rather, is very active, you won't have to worry about the shape at all. It will maintain its shape almost regardless of the water content in your dough. So you may, in the beginning, when you first start your first sourdough bread, you may not, you probably should, I would say, go with a thicker or less soft dough than what I'm used to here. because it may not maintain that shape as easily. So 
that's how we go with this. Now for shaping, I'll be using the parchment paper method and I'll show you how I, I do that. Let's get a few things out of the way here. That out of the way. Maybe move this down slightly. We want to fit all three of the baguettes on there. If you don't have a baguette pan, you would just simply put it on the parchment paper here on the diagonal because it's longer than your parchment paper will be. Just keep that shaped. And we bring the paper up like this. So it has somewhere to sit against the other loaf, basically, is what you'd be doing. So we push that up, keep it on that diagonal, exactly like that. And um, the third one. We have a little space here to put our third one. All we do now is we let these rise until they're double, depending on how long that takes. I would say about two hours is what I would like it to do because it's it will give it more flavor the longer that it sits, as long as it doesn't deflate. <laughs> So be careful with that. If it has doubled, maybe your first time trying it, um, go ahead and put it in once it's doubled. And that's how it's made. It has now more than doubled in size, so we can go ahead and put that in the oven. To do this with this uh, type of method that I've chosen without the baguette pan, we're just going to be choosing the first one that's here and I just cut along here just go ahead and cut all the way along so you have an individual baguette here that you can put right onto your pan we want to keep that as straight as possible from here on in I think I'll go ahead though and slash this first. So what I have here, it's a blade um, to give it those nice little slashes that you see. Um, I'd also like to add a little bit of flour to that because it just adds to the end result in uh, visual. So we'll put some flour on that. Don't You don't have to be too delicate with this just go ahead and spread that right over the top like that try and get it as evenly as possible so we'll go ahead with I'm not I haven't perfected this that's for sure but we'll go ahead you want to give it quick slashes like so if they're not that deep, actually they look pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead with that. It will open up more once it's in the oven as well. I find the easiest way to get that into our pizza, onto our pizza stone, I should say, is to just scoot it onto your pan like that. If it sticks, don't worry about it. Just Pick it up, put it inside, and it will come up and bake very beautifully. This is that 450 degree oven, and that will be for about 20 minutes or until dark golden. 
I like it dark golden. It gives it a much better uh, flavor. So we'll see how that goes. Our bread is ready. Let's take a look and see how it did. Wow, it's nicely golden. It opened up. So you'll see where I had slashed it. Now, this end is stuck to the pan. So it's a little odd there, but that's okay. Nobody really worries about that. And we'll just go ahead and give this a cut. You would not at this point cut your bread because it's way too hot just coming out. But let's go ahead. Oh, crunchy. Wow, it's so hot. <laughs> Let's try that. You'll also notice that it's, it has little holes inside. It's nice and crunchy on the outside. That's what you're looking for. And all you need is a little butter. Wow. Believe me when I say sourdough is just packed with flavor. You'll need to give this one a try. If there's anything that you have in questions for the sourdough, please go ahead. Uh, leave comments in the comment section. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe. You have a wonderful day.